rejection hurts and it can be very painful especially when you've had some past experiences where you've had to be where you felt rejected or abandoned or tossed aside maybe you grew up in a household where you felt like you didn't get the emotional support you needed from your parents you know and whatever the reason may be that you have these wounds of rejection and when you get rejected again sometimes it's so painful that it causes you to become stuck it causes your fears to enhance and sing in your life. It causes your inner critic to sing. Like you're not good enough or you're not worthy to be loved in your subconscious mind because it has this root of rejection, this wound of rejection that is the master program of your mind singing. When somebody rejects you, it teams up with those previous experiences and it causes you to settle in your life. It causes you to question your worth. And so now I'm in pain because somebody walked away from me. Somebody left me. Somebody cheated on me. Somebody betrayed me. Maybe I lost my job that I've been on for years and they fired me. And, 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 and I felt like it should have been somebody else or they gave a position to somebody else that you figure it was yours. Maybe your root of rejection goes so deep that you'll post something on Facebook and somebody doesn't like it so you feel like you begin to second guess your work because somebody's not liking something that maybe you thought they should like. The pain of rejection hurts. The pain of rejection hurts. I remember when I was younger and and I've been rejected plenty of times in my life. Life, life rejection is going to happen as part of life people are going to shut doors people are going to leave you people are going to choose differently it is life and it happens but when i was younger i remember my first major breakup i remember this it was my scott high school sweetheart who we are friends today you guys we're together and he decided that we had been together for a while and he just decided to move on and he had every right to but the way i took it was so painful I remember pulling over to a side of the road and crying and crying. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand it. And I made the mistake. And the reason I'm making this video is to help you overcome the pain. But I don't want you to make the mistake, especially while you're going through this moment of feeling rejected. To make the mistake to run to something else because you, need, you have this need to be validated to allow your pain of rejection to keep you hopping in and out of unproductive situations. You have to learn how to deal with rejection. And if you deal with it right, I guarantee you and promise you that you will heal from it and be able to move on and not let the spirit of fear have a stronghold and a field day in your mind. I promise you. I promise you. And so today, I want you to learn that as you are experiencing moments of rejection, how to overcome the pain. And one of the first things you have to do is forgive it. You have to forgive the person who rejected you. When you don't forgive the person, listen, even if you were in a relationship for years and years, and somebody walked away from you or you were in a marriage and they took vows and somebody left you, somebody cheated on you, somebody did you wrong, you still have to forgive them because if you don't forgive them, that root of rejection sinks hard. I mean, it roots down in there and it sets up shop for you to have emotional issues. I'm telling you it does. It causes you to do things that you wouldn't do if rejection wasn't ruling your mind. Because when we go through rejection moments, really we should take time to pull away and reassess and give take our parts, our responsibility for our hand in, reject, in the rejection, if there's any for you to take and give the responsibility to the person. I remember my first uh, boyfriend, he told me, he said, listen, I just want, I'm ready to move on. Nothing he did wrong. He, he did it the right, I'm ready to move on. I'm, I'm sorry. I've been meaning to tell you. I just didn't know how to tell you. 
And the truth is, I knew we were about done. We were done a while ago. I just didn't know how to let it go. Because that relationship was validating everything. It was validating that I was somebody. But it also was validating that my um, feeling like I wasn't enough. Because when people have moved on, they act as if they moved on. And you're crying out and crying and making these phone calls like, when you gonna come see me or when you gonna... This was me, y'all. This is my little 20-something-year-old self. But we can do that in the later on in our adulthood too. Begging for love. And you don't have to beg for love. So when you learn how to heal the wound of rejection and overcome the pain of rejection, you find yourself okay to move forward and you won't settle. I'm settling for what people are doing to me because I don't know how to move on. It's easier for me to stay than for me to accept the fact that this person does not does not want me right now, does not want this type of relationship right now, so I'll settle for scraps. The first thing to do is forgive somebody. When you begin to forgive them, you begin to release, you release the power they have over you. It's okay to feel the pain of rejection. It's okay to feel it. It's okay to say, this hurts like hell, excuse me, Lord, but it hurts like hell. It's hurt something crazy. And it's okay, because rejection hurts. Rejection don't have to be somebody left you. Rejection can be that somebody belittles you, and they dog you, and they criticize you all the time. And it's like they're rejecting you. And you don't have to accept that rejection. You, you can feel the pain of it. You can feel the pain of it. But you don't have to accept it. Like that hurt. And I'm telling y'all, some of y'all are in relationships where you're allowing people to reject you. The same person to reject you every day, all day. They tell you how good enough, not good enough you are. If they're not telling you verbally like you're not good enough, they tell you in certain ways, you didn't got too big. Or I don't know why you're doing that. You're stupid. How can you be? And some people, they're okay with that and they can settle with that because the things that they're telling you aligns with what you already think about yourself. And although it's hurting you, you don't know how to walk away from it. Because you have these fear filters as if I walk away, I'm nobody. Because if he don't want me, who else would want me? And that is the lie. The enemy uses rejection to keep us separated from God. Separated from our purpose. That is his job. That is his job. And that's what rejection does. It's okay to grieve a loss of a relationship. Say somebody did move on. Say that somebody did walk away from you. Say that the door did shut. It's okay if a friend betrayed you and now you have to let them go. If maybe some of you guys, you're in a place in your life where you've decided to level up in your life, you've decided to win. And now the people around you are beginning to look at you like, who do you think you are? And they're shying away from you because you decided to get up and do something with your life. And it hurts. There are people who's actually given up on their dreams because they could not tolerate the pain of rejection. They could not deal with it. So they settle. They go back to their comfort zone. It feels better when everybody liked me and validated me. No. When you decide to win, you have to give up relationships. You have to give up toxic ones and sometimes family. You got to let people go. They'll never stop being family, but you do not have to deal with them all the time. Because they, they're not where you are. And it's okay. You have to feel that. Like this hurts, but I have to let it go. This is part of the growing process. Just really quickly. Um, rejection can feel worse than death. Re rejection can feel worse than death. Because that person is still existing. And they walked away from you. They rejected you. And you don't understand why. It's easier when somebody dies or got in a car accident and it's final. So you're not, they're not coming back and you grieve that. But now what happens when somebody walks away from me and, and choose somebody else? And now I want to compare myself to that somebody else because it hurts so bad. I don't know how to accept it. I don't know how to accept it. This hurts like, this hurts seeing him with her. Seeing him choose her. Or seeing him, her choose him. Or seeing these people look like they're happy and I'm not. So it, it feels worse than death. Because death is just final. 
it's okay to grieve a loss of a relationship and 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 the and understand that the feelings of anger the bible says be angry and sin not because when you let anger sit and set up shop in your heart and don't forgive the person then bitterness iniquity all of that sets in your unforgiveness sets in and your soulless realm becomes disturbed it come it, it your soulless realms become contaminated because you would not forgive it. That's why you have to forgive it. I'm telling you, sometimes you have to say it to yourself, like, I forgive it, I let it go. And when those thoughts keep coming, cast them back down. Like, I'm not, yes, I am. I am enough. I am enough. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This person that did this to me, that's on them. They have the right to walk away from me. And although it does not dictate my worth, it hurts. And I'm angry and I'm frustrated about it. And sometimes a little depression wants to set in. But you got to put a date on it. I remember I was going through something here not too, too long ago. It was a little while ago. And when you begin to win, I'm telling you, people begin to change on you. And I had to accept that. And it was okay. People have the right. They have the right to say, I don't want to be in your life. But when you your emotions become healthy and you become healthy-minded, you embrace their right to walk away. But you also embrace the fact that their walking away has nothing to do with your worth. That you are still worthy. That you are still somebody and you're going to be okay. I'm telling you. Um, so all of these shock, uh, sadness, fear, all of those are normal in a loss of a relationship. But you don't let fear set up shock in your mind so you can't move on or you're moving on too fast because you have this need to be validated in your relationships. Get around people that love you. Sometimes when we get in, uh, into these relationships, especially very toxic relationships, listen, ladies, a healthy relationship does not require you to abandon your family and to abandon your friends. I know in the beginning of a relationship, you go through like this honeymoon stage and you're like, I just want to be with him. It feels good. But a healthy relationship fosters all of your relationships. It allows you to embrace your, your your family, your friends. But when you're starting to feel isolated and pulled away, that's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. And, and if you find yourself being, you know, putting all yourself into a relationship and you're not finding the balance in your relationships, you have to figure out why you're doing that. Because when this person ups and walk away from you, <laughs> and, and leaves you hang, it leaves you hanging, and now you want to reach out to people that you've totally abandoned and left alone because now you're off into this new relationship. You ain't got time for nobody. It's you're gonna feel bad about you know reconnecting with these people. But nevertheless, if that is you and you found yourself isolated, take the time to reach out to the people you know that love you and let them help reaffirm you and help encourage you. And, and so that you can begin to feel the love that you need to help you get unstuck and get out of this rut of rejection that you're feeling. Rejection hurts. It just does. It does. So you just embrace the pain for a minute and then you let it go. Because it's okay to acknowledge the pain. Say, this really does hurt. It doesn't feel good. And I hate that they left me. I wish they were here. I wish they were here. I want my family. I don't want my husband to be off with somebody else. But this is his choice. And he has the right to make that choice. And listen, I know you're like, well, he took vows. Maybe they did. But sweetie, this is life. And people walk away. Been there, done it. People walk away. But you are still somebody. And doors shut. But when doors shut, God opens new ones. Listen. If you, during your time of rejection, still away and start spending, especially during rejection, oh my God, during a time of rejection, anyway, every day that we spend time with God and we begin to stay, keep a close-knit relationship with our Creator because He reminds us who we are and we are His and He never rejects us. He will, now human beings are going to reject you. People reject us at the end of the day, but God never rejects you. He will never. You are his. He created you for a purpose. And as long as you keep in mind the purpose that he created you for, it don't matter who rejects you. <laughs> it doesn't matter who rejects you. Listen really quickly before I go. 
I just want to um, remind you of my book, I Healed on Purpose. I Healed on Purpose is a great book. I'm telling you guys, this is a wonderful book. This book helps you understand which wounds are controlling your life. Is it rejection? Is it abandonment? Is it humiliation, betrayal, injustice? Which of these wounds control my life? Am I doing well financially and suffering in my relationship? Do I have this need to control everybody? Am I a perfectionist and I have this fear of failure? What is it? What is it in your life that's, that's controlling your life? What fears is controlling your life? What wounds are controlling your life? Then I give you the strategies to overcome the wounds that's here for you to heal those wounds and also the fault patterns that set up shock in your mind because of the wounds that rule your life we go in and i help you to destroy and eradicate those belief systems and once you destroy and eradicate that belief system then i help you to adopt a new belief system according to your creator and what your creator says about you listen god created you to win he created you to be healthy emotionally he said my will is for you to prosper be in good health, even as your soul prosper, even as your soul prosper. So he don't want you to win financially and be sick in your soul. He doesn't want you to be this super healthy uh, person and you're losing in your soul, losing financially. He said all three of them together. And the secret to it is your soulish realm. <laughs> it's your will. It's your soulish realm. And God wants to heal your soul. He doesn't want you to be broken. He wants you to win. And in order for you to win, you have to heal your wounded soul. The link to this book is going to be below. Listen, you guys, from now until the end of the year, my book, and though it's a quick sale, I don't mind because I want your wounds to be healed. My book is going to sell for $12. This book is $15. It is sell for $12. And on Black Friday, you get the book on Black Friday for ten dollars that day and that day only it is ten dollars just that day so if you wait for black friday get your copy this book right here called it's it's, it's got some self-assessments in there it's got prayer in there it's got scriptures in there but it also gives you the strategies it's got quotes in there um i've picked some of the best quotes in there i'm telling you you guys um for everything that i tell you you have the scriptures to go along with it this is my proof book y'all i had to actually send the book back and it's got read y'all have a different book you want to even look this big so i had to reformat but the truth of the matter is it's in there and um listen don't y'all leave out of 2019 and, and go into 2020 with a whole bunch of emotional baggage it's not what you're gonna do what you're gonna do is heal from it you allow god to heal your wounded soul so that you can become who he created you to be listen if you like this video wherever you're watching it whether it's on youtube Facebook, wherever social media, share this video with somebody. Listen, give the gift of healing to somebody this year, even if you buy them this book. Or just share this video. Somebody may be going some through something you don't even know what they're going through. If you like my video, press the like button, give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe. Um, if you like my videos, hit that bell below and when i come on you're able to it notify you when i come on listen you guys i want to thank you for watching this video and you make it a wonderful blessed day